Welcome to the Success Sensei Podcast for anyone interested in success, happiness, and balance. We'll teach you how to be a black belt at life. And now, your host, former professional fighter, multiple world champion, entrepreneur, and investor, Robert Devan. Bowing in. This is Roundhouse Rob, the success sensei, helping you to win at life one kick and punch at a time. Today's episode, what is sweat equity? And this is episode 223. Welcome to the Friday Blitz. The success sensei, Friday Blitz coming at ya. What is sweat equity? Well, it's a term I've used a few times now. In fact, the last episode, um, hopefully you've listened to it, the amazing BRRR strategy, B-R-R-R strategy. If you haven't, it's worth a listen to after this episode. But I do talk about sweat equity and I've used it a few times. So I thought I'd do uh, an individual episode basically breaking down what exactly it is. So keeping it really simplistic, it's where you use your time and your energy, basically your unpaid labor instead of finance slash money slash cash to build up equity in an asset or a business. So you're using your sweat, the sweat off your brow, the sweat off your back to build equity in an asset or a business. So no money or low money. So sweat equity can be used even if, if, I'm not saying there's absolutely no money is being put into your venture, but it could be low money. You're saving a lot of money by, by not paying yourself for your own time and your own energy. There are, believe it or not, many successful business people that prefer this strategy to any other strategy. So there's many successful business people who have set up lots of different businesses and every time they do they prefer to do it no cost or low cost and using plenty of sweat equity because they enjoy seeing something build up from nothing well who wouldn't Um, and then there are other business people who specialize in an already well established business and bringing it to an even higher tier so they're totally different types of business people but the ones we're specifically talking about right now the sweat equity entrepreneurs are those that like to start from zero and to see it build up from there. So first, my first, I think, sweat equity job as a lot of people had was a newspaper round. And I, I was reminiscing about this when I was putting together my notes for this episode. And I think I I, I only got two pence per newspaper delivered and I couldn't do it American style and just throw it out the door it had to actually be put through every individual letterbox so I had to go through each driveway individually because they didn't like you jumping over their walls and they didn't like you not um, closing their gates after after you so two it was a lot of work it was a lot of sweat two pence because we weren't on the euro at that stage per newspaper so I had to deliver 200 newspapers to get four pounds and then I copped on that I could deliver two different types of newspapers and essentially try to double my money on the same route and these are free newspapers by the way so that was the first example to me of sweat equity I, I there was no point I couldn't use a bicycle because you had to walk into each individual entrance of each individual house to post it so I couldn't even use a bike. So I had no cost. The only cost was my time and my energy. So that was my first example. And I'm sure you have ones. Because when I when I went through the list of jobs that you could use sweat equity for, basically it was every job I could possibly conceive of. I mean, there's obvious ones. I come from the personal training world, martial arts and gym training. A lot of personal trainers don't have a large inventory of of gear or stock or equipment. So it's pretty much sweat equity, but it doesn't just have to be physical tasks. It can be, you know, mental sweat equity. Um, it could be, you're, you could be doing surveys on, online. You could be emailing people online. You could be drumming up business. Every hour that you're not in your current job, you could be putting sweat equity into your side business. 
it's used for for a lot of different areas. I suppose that the largest area that the the term sweat equity would be used would be in property investment and DIY projects when you can do a lot of the work yourself. Um, I'm not recommending doing the the electrics or the plumbing, but there's other jobs that you could possibly do, or maybe you could labor for your plumber or labor for your electrician. But there's a lot that you can do to bring the job. To I suppose I was going to say under budget, yeah, to a smaller budget than if you were just to throw endless amounts of money at the job. So if you don't, if you have endless amounts of money, then absolutely um, scale up, start delegating, throw money at people. But a lot of people don't. But that's what I'm saying. It's not just a thing of not having enough money. Some people favor this as a strategy to getting started and to seeing something build up but it's certainly a super option if you don't have the money to invest in your own startup business so marketing for example and advertising door to door can still work depending on the industry that you're in delivering your own flyers can work as i mentioned earlier surveys so spending hours you know emailing people and talking to people online doing surveys to to figure out your your market and what it is that they're looking for face to face meetups when we're allowed to meet up again that's that's still a very valuable skill and deals get done face to face if we're ever allowed to shake hands and greet people again after covid so basically harness the power of the internet there's sweat equity doesn't just have to be the sweat off your back as i said it could be the sweat off your brow uh, with thinking and, and coming up with your strategies and putting the time in online to build up your business as opposed to getting someone else and delegating someone else to do it build up your business basically or build up your asset until you're able to um until you're able to uh, delegate so un until you're able to scale up uh, that's always a great strategy so the power is in your hands by the way um microsoft founders founder of apple founder of facebook the founder of all these large companies all use considerable sweat equity yeah they could have had donations from family members but they also used a hell of a lot of their own unpaid labor there's always pictures um in connection with with these various large companies of you know the original founders in their sitting room or in their bedroom doing lots of work that doesn't look very glamorous and it's something that you can do as well the already established main players can't leverage sweat equity they can't turn around to all their staff and say that they're not going to pay them now and they expect them to put in lots of sweat equity but you can and it's absolutely an advantage to you and there's no shame in starting small with no money or low money it's a very romantic view and romantic and romanticized fantasy to have something that's worth absolutely zero. You put in a lot of time and effort and very little money and suddenly that this thing is successful and it takes off and it generates a hell of a lot of cash and a hell of a lot of success. I mean, who wouldn't want to be able to claim that they did that? So by all means, don't let sweat equity put you off from your goals or your ambitions or the things that you want to have, do or experience. Your assets are your business are your side business i wish you all the best thank you for listening i'm round house rob the success sensei life is a fight you can enjoy and win bowing out this has been the success sensei fighting the winning fight so add us subscribe like and comment Keep those hands up and keep moving forward.